there are lots of different types of policy um, questions. There's political, there's having to do with Israel, there's having to do with women's issues, there's having to do with academia, there's having to do with the, the uh, uh, access to, to information. There's all kinds of different policy uh, issues. What it sounds like you're saying to me so far is that, that Torah leaders are not necessarily the ones that we should be, expect to be prepared um, to, to handle those kinds of decision, decisions and, and have that kind of leadership. Is, before I go on, is that what you are trying to say? No. I'm only saying it about uh, life and death situations con connected to the political situation in Eretz Yisrael. So I'm asking it about the... But it was a question of education. Like, you want to know, what kind of people should we be turning out? Mm -hmm. Who is it who should, you know, who's the, the Jew that you imagine in your mind that, uh, uh, that we should be producing? That I think Rabbi Nim certainly should have a, a say in that. But as you know very well, you're not going to get a single unified answer. And, and that's a separate problem. But there, you know, is, there's no way for us to make a decision. There's no Sanhedrin, I think. And there's no board of rabbinic uh, authority. So that the question of, say, going to university, studying at a university, is a difficult question. Everybody understands that for some people it's not good. For other people it might be not only good, but it might be wonderful. To make a policy decision is difficult. So you have a, a, a very wide range of policy decisions that are made by Rabbanim who are Shomrei Toro Mitzvahs 120%. So that it, then it devolves because of this communication glut that we have. Because everybody knows what everybody said about everything. It then falls to the individual, I think, to make the decision. Now whether your decision is I'm going to listen to that rabbi or listen to this rabbi. That's also a decision. Are you saying that as a positive or a negative? Or no, see, this way? is the reality. I mean, there was once a time you lived in a little town and you had a rav and you went to the rav and you asked the question. Or you were a chassid and you went to the rebbe and asked the question. That was the end of it. Today, that, that's, it doesn't work that way for, for many, many, many people. Even people who are in chassidish communities or yeshivish communities, even for them, they're well aware of the fact that there are different opinions and different possibilities and that somehow they have to navigate themselves through these opinions and possibilities. And, and so education is not just about receiving the, whatever the Rebbe has to teach, but it's also about giving people the, the wherewithal to make decisions and to be able to navigate their way through this plethora of opinions and statements and ideas and uh, uh, just today in the newspaper today there was uh, there were three yeshivot what? You read newspaper? Uh, on the internet <laughs> no the, the newspapers on the internet don't have usually you know as much advertising as, uh, but in any event in any event today in Israel there were three they, they discovered three yeshivas that uh, were uh, stealing from uh, from the government. Uh, they, they would hand in false lists of students and, and they would receive payment for each of these non-existent students. And they discovered that this was happening in three yeshivot, one in Meir Sharem, one in Beitar, one in Ramat Beit Shemesh. So if you look at the newspaper, so the newspaper quotes Rebel Yashiv, interestingly enough, as you know, I mean, I realize that newspaper quotes are not always accurate, but the newspaper quoted Rabbi Yashiv as saying that these people have the status of a rodef, that they are, uh, besides causing a chilul Hashem, they're endangering all of the other Haredim in the community, and therefore they should be despised. Now, he didn't say that, but like a rodef, they're a rodef, you have to stop them. 
Um, the other newspaper article explained the ideological position that these people had, that since the government, by taking taxes, is stealing money from me, since I don't like the government, I don't recognize the government, I don't, they're stealing money, so stealing the money back is not called stealing. It's more like a recovery uh, uh, enterprise. So here you are, you're reading the newspaper. It doesn't have to be in the newspaper. This, I'm sure, is the conversation that yeshiva-type people have all the time. Is it a this or is it a that? Is it a rodave or is, it a, is he righteous for stealing money of Robin Hood, He's stealing money that was stolen and using it for Torah purpose? What could be better than that? So here it is. It's like right there, right in front of you. You have to make a decision. Every person has to make a decision about what world he lives in. Does he live in this world, or where it's forbidden to do such a thing, or does he live in the other world, where it is encouraged almost to do, to do such a thing? So that the decision-making process has moved to a great extent into the parlor of the individual. And then even after you hear what this rabbi says, or that rabbi says, or even people who you have great faith in and trust in, you still have to make a, a decision because you have to justify for yourself that you're not doing what the other leaders have told you to do. So that's, I think, is a, I mean, maybe I'm exaggerating and probably existed for some people in the ancient, in olden times, but today, because everybody knows instantly what everybody says about everything, so that the, if that's how it comes in. As it comes, so if you're scholarly, so you say, well, why did he say this and why did he say that? You know, and you generally find that all positions are justifiable. But if you're not scholarly, you just get the, you're just attacked by two positions, and you can't adopt two positions. You could only adopt one. So you have to decide. And that, uh, uh, that demands education. The better you are educated, I mean, one of the big problems of democracy is that people who vote don't always understand what they're voting about. Uh, and maybe that democracy is still the best system that, that we have to produce uh, what we produce, but um, it's, not, uh, it's not simple. Not simple. People don't always know what it is that they are, uh, uh, that they are voting for. And in Torah, it's important that people be on a high enough level that they can make a decision that is reasonable. Like, I'm not taking the power away from the rabbis. I'm just saying that the rabbis have, have given me this dilemma. And I look around, there's no one that's going to help me if I don't help myself. The, uh...